What's going on everyone, it's Justin here, and today I've got a video of the iPhone 13. So we're going to be taking a look at some of the dummies of all four of the models, whether it's a 13 mini, 13, 13 Pro, and also 13 Pro Max, and some of the small details and changes that we expect based on all the information that we have up to today. So obviously these right here are based on like the CAD models, the dimensions, the additional thickness, the camera design and everything, and also the camera placement as you're going to notice on some models. And we're gonna be comparing it side by side with the current generation iPhone 12 Pro and also the iPhone 12. As always, if you guys wanna stay up to date with all the Apple releases, just make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video, and also leave a comment down below as to what your favorite feature is and also what you would like to see on the next generation iPhone. So for starters right here, the iPhone 13 lineup is expected to come out at the end of September. And I know last year it was delayed, but this year it is said to come back to its original schedule of September releases. And we're expecting to see four models, including a 5.4 inch 13 mini, a 6.1 inch 13 and 13 Pro, and a 6.7 inch 13 Pro Max. That is definitely not a surprise, aside from the fact that the 13 mini is going to be a thing. And apparently based on the numbers, the 12 mini hasn't been selling well at all, to the point where Apple has cut down production significantly. And I think the reason why they didn't like cut off the model entirely is just because all these things are planned months and months in advance, if not years, and that production has already started, and so they're gonna continue moving on with it, but that the production levels are gonna be significantly lower than they probably would have expected when they first brought back the mini model. And I almost feel like that's a good thing because people are embracing the new sizes and like as phones are getting larger on the Android world and everything, it seems like that's gonna be the trend of the iPhone side as well. The next thing expected is also a new color. So instead of having a space gray, they're gonna be doing a matte black and also a bronze or like an orange one. And I'm not really sold on the bronze one just yet, but I do think it should look pretty decent compared to some of the images that we're seeing right now. And the matte black especially is going to be the one that I wanna check out because I feel like everything that I have right now has transitioned over to black, whereas I used to prefer the white a lot more. So taking a look at some of the form factors here and starting out with the iPhone 13 and 13 mini, it does seem like the camera orientation is going to change. And the reason for that is because the elements are said to be larger, which means better cameras, larger sensor. And the fact that it is actually taking up more space means that it makes more sense for them to offset it in order to fit it all in the same amount of room. So as you can see right here, the iPhone 13 and also the iPhone 12. And as you can see right now, the camera is stacked top to bottom. And on this one, it is diagonal. The cameras are expected to be the same as the Pro model, similar to what we have right now so it does look like on the 13 there isn't going to be any like form factor related changes um, or many hardware differences at all aside from the fact that the camera is offset and also the notch on the top being smaller on the pro side of things, so it doesn't seem to be many changes at all either here. The form factor and everything is very similar, but there are a few things to point out. So the first one is once again in the camera elements. The orientation is obviously going to stay the same because of the three camera setup, but as a result, it does have a larger element. On top of that, I also noticed that on the dummy itself, it does have like a smaller lip to it compared to what is on the iPhone 12 Pro. And the reason for that is that the phone is actually going to be a little bit thicker as well. It's said to be about 0.26 millimeter thicker overall, which is pretty much unnoticeable being less than a millimeter, but definitely an area to make note of because we're expecting to see a larger battery as well. Even though the lenses seem to sit a little bit more flush in the dummy, it is said that the overall camera element will sit 0.87 millimeters taller than on the 12 Pro and Pro Max. Honestly, from a look standpoint, I don't really mind, but one thing that you will notice as an observation here is that one camera is smaller than the other two. And it does seem like one is probably the same size as the previous generation, but the other two have the larger sensor due to it being an improved ultra-wide camera and also main camera. Some of the other features expected in the camera is a sensor shift stabilization as well, which also explains a larger element, meaning obviously the video stabilization is going to be better and same with photos, but the sensor size is actually also going to increase to 1.9 microns. That is gonna be paired with a 7P wide lens and a f1.5 aperture, which is all nice to see. And with like astrophotography being a huge part of smartphones, the iPhone is also expected to embrace that. Another area that hasn't seen like a huge improvement over the years is the ultra wide camera. But in the iPhone 13, we are hearing that it's going to be a 1.8 aperture with a six element lens. 
But it does seem like a big focus overall on the next generation iPhone's camera is in the low light performance. Some of the other features that we also expect is portrait mode video, which I think will be pretty cool because Apple usually doesn't implement features until they work pretty well. So after years of like utilizing the LiDAR sensor and also just the portrait mode in general on the iPhone and seeing what it is able to do, I expect that to be a pretty big improvement. Before I move on though, I wanna give a huge thanks to the sponsor of this video, Keeper Security and their password manager. So whether you're thinking of picking up the next generation iPhone or already have one or any device that you might have, Keeper Security is something that you can definitely utilize to enhance your everyday life because it helps you safely and securely save your passwords and it also allows you to generate effective and secure ones directly from the platform itself. I'm definitely someone who is a huge supporter of password managers because as someone who used to always forget my password or be asked to change my account passwords all the time and with so many of them to keep track of, I would either forget my password or something gets hacked and it just becomes super annoying. So by having a password manager like Keeper, it not only helps you create a secure password, but it also helps you remember them as well and has a built-in security check to ensure that all of your accounts are nice and secure. Beyond having a password manager, I do also recommend every single person to use two two-factor authentication, whether it is Google Authenticator or any other one out there, because it's just a very important safeguard that is very quick, but can save you down the road. If you guys wanna go ahead and check out Keeper Security for yourself, I have a discount code on screen and also in the top link of the description section below. And a huge thanks to Keeper once again for sponsoring this video. Other than that though, once again, when you take a look at the iPhone 13's dummy as well as the iPhone 12 Pro side by side, it does seem like the iPhone 13 Pro Max is going to be a little bit thicker. About 0.26 millimeters is what it's said to be, and that is going to be on both of the Pro models. The reason for this is because it's going to have a slightly larger battery, and even if it's very minor, with the LTPO display, it is said to be a thinner element, but with having a larger battery, they can have 120 hertz as well as 5G, because before it was often like a one or the other thing, otherwise the phone would be too power consuming. Another big contributor to having a better battery life is also the five nanometer processor. Right now, the iPhone has an A14 chip that is a seven nanometer, and over the years, processors have been getting much more efficient and also more powerful. But efficiency has been the area where phones need to make a bigger progression on because processors are already extremely powerful on these phones. So hopefully with all these elements, the battery life will be the same, if not better, than the previous generation with all these new features that really bring it to 2021 and ones that iPhone users have been waiting for for many years. There have also been rumors of one terabyte of internal storage, which is really good because I know some users who really want to utilize the camera and the raw capabilities of it are gonna fill it up really quick. Just as we finish up taking a look at the iPhone 13 Pro Max's dummy, is that the SIM tray is actually shifted a little bit higher as well. And there is also going to be the lightning port once again. I know there was like a lot of rumors of like Apple switching to USB type C because they've done that with the iPad and everything, but it does seem like the iPhone is still gonna remain on the lightning platform for the time being. So now moving on to the front side of things, I know these dummies don't really do a good job of illustrating anything on the front, but I thought I would talk about it anyways because it does seem like we're finally going to be getting a smaller notch. And that is something that like some people have complained about on the iPhone over the years, whereas others feel like it isn't really an issue at all. But I feel like anytime you can have a smaller notch, you definitely want it. And so the next generation iPhone is said to reduce the size significantly. And that is because the camera is going to be shifted over a little bit. The earpiece is actually gonna be put on the top and blend in pretty seamlessly, as you can see on these models right here. On the display side of things, for the Pro and Pro Max, we're also expecting to see an LTPO OLED Pro Motion display, which is not only 120 hertz, but it can also turn off individual pixels that aren't being used, which further push the efficiency side of it. There has also been some information pointing towards a feature that I've been waiting for for a long time, and that is an in-display fingerprint sensor. And I know with like COVID or anything, like the masks don't exactly work that well with Face ID. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So having this built in, I feel like it's a good feature to have regardless of COVID. It's just super handy and very seamless. So we're not really sure if that's going to be coming this year or next year. So at the end of the day, what do I think of the next generation iPhone after taking a look at some of the information that is floating around as well as the actual physical dummies? And to be totally honest with you, as you expect, there's no difference in terms of the form factor. Just from holding on it, you're not gonna feel the additional weight or the size, and it's just so microscopic, but I do think you're going to notice the 120 hertz display and also the smaller notch, and those are big contributing features that have also altered a little bit of the design and form factor as well. The other area, of course, is 
is the camera here. And it seems like all the models are gonna be getting an improvement in terms of the sensor size, the stabilization, and also the low light performance and the astrophotography. And I think that will be very important because I do feel like even though Apple's low light performance has generally been pretty good, there has definitely been better options out there from the Android side. I really don't mind the orientation shift of the 13 and 13 mini, and I do think the larger elements and everything are something that you will notice if you're comparing it side by side, but once again, for functionality, it does seem like the trade-off is worth it. The stabilization has already been really good on the iPhone 12 Pro Max, but with sensor shift stabilization, that brings things to the next level, and especially with good low light performance, you need good stabilization. I am looking forward to trying on the portrait mode video and just seeing how well it works when live and whether it really utilizes that LiDAR sensor, but I think what I'm most excited for overall is the display. 120 hertz, the possibility of a fingerprint sensor built in, and also an increased screen to body ratio are all things that I think can make a big impact on the day-to-day -day use in the design direction of the iPhone. Are these revolutionary designs? Absolutely not. These look pretty much the exact same. They're recycled in terms of the way they look. There's really nothing like crazy or special in terms of what you expect to see next year in terms of like the design itself of the iPhone. And I don't know when they're going to like shift anything up, but it does seem like Apple has sort of found a medium with like flat edges, things that are a little bit more squared off. And that seems like the direction that the iPad lineup has gone in 2018 that has influenced the iPhone lineup and eventually the MacBook lineup that is expected to come out in the end of the year as well. So if you guys enjoyed this video of a look of the iPhone 13 dummies, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video, and I'll see you all in the next one.